So, day one of our mammoth trip. Vita's not here, so I guess I'm doing all the narration myself. Um, going up to a golden trout lake right now. It's at about 10,000 feet, I think. Um, it's a fairly steep, steep hike up, but it's got big fish. Uh, the fish are fairly difficult to catch, but I've got a, a pattern that works really well um, during the caddis migration. So if my timing's right, caddis are migrating, then uh, I should get into some fish. Otherwise, I'll be at a loss because I've never, I've never been able to catch fish here when the caddis aren't migrating. I don't know, it said 30% chance of rain. Um, the weather up here can, can be horrid and you don't want to get caught in that canyon in a thunderstorm. But uh, so far, so good. I'm hoping that these ridges keep these clouds out at least until uh, mid-afternoon. So this is about the flattest it gets. There's a campground up here and if you've got a four-wheel drive vehicle and I say I should say, I shouldn't say four-wheel drive but you have a real off-road vehicle um, you can you can actually drive up here but you need to have high ground clearance and um, four-wheel drive and you need to have a steady nerve. Um, I've, I've been hiking up here and uh, there was one time where somebody came by and did me a solid by picking me up. And uh, you know, I'd hiked the trail before, but never in a car or in a truck. And I tell you, when you get up to the lake and you know, it's barely wider than it is now, and it's a sheer drop off of just rock fall. I mean, there is no road up there. It's just rock fall and you're just, you're driving across the scree. It's hairy. And uh, people have actually died. They've, um, uh, they've made a bad decision and slid off the side of the, of the scree, flipped their vehicles. And that, that, that happened a couple years ago happened a couple times. So anyway, way up there in the distance is where I'm going. You can probably see, if you look real closely, can I zoom in here? Yeah. So you probably see that line of snow. Um, if you look in, in the center of the frame, there's a line of trees. Right below that, there's a line of snow. That's the road. Um, this time of year, typically what happens is people have to park right about where to the left of that that uh, that ridge line and then hike up <sighs> okay so I'm at about the one hour mark it's gonna be a I don't know two and a half hour hike probably um, behind me is is where I'm going and you can see this the trail starts to uh, well the lower trail is pretty steep and then it mellows out and now it's starting to get steep again So that's what I was saying about this road, is it just gets gnarly. And you can see that that guy decided to turn around or not go any farther. And the, the weather's starting to come in. I'm really hoping that I can get up there. So I ran into some snow a little bit uh, sooner than I expected. I'm almost at, the, at where I would normally expect to see the snow line, right up there. And I'll follow that, follow the road up to up the middle of the screen. You can see where the, um, where, the, where the cascade is. That's the outlet of the first lake. So I've got to hike along this ridge and then drop down into the first lake and then across to the second lake. So I'm near the top. I've got some patches of snow to, to navigate. And uh, yeah, you don't wanna take, take a bad step. 
So my my camera stopped taking movies for a while and it took me a while to figure out that the problem was I ran out of disk space. Anyway, I've uh, I've come up to the top and I've started working my way down. Uh, now we're hitting snow patches, so you know you get that you come to that decision: do you want to glissade or do you want to <laughs> do you want to um, put your snowshoes on? And I've decided to put my snowshoes on just because um, I don't feel like glissading today. And uh, it can, <laughs> especially on some of these slopes, it can be it can be a little hairy. You get your uh, um, you get your pole caught, and it swings you around, and all of a sudden you're sliding backwards. Um, plus, there's a lot of trees, and so I'd have to get up, glissade, get up, glissade some more, get up. Um, and there's a lots of pointy, as you can see, as you can see here, lots of pointy rocks that are underneath the snow, and I don't know how deep it is. So snowshoes it is there's the lower lake the upper lake is where the big fish are and that's where i'm headed and you can barely see now where i came from um, it's unfortunate i couldn't get a movie higher up so i'm down at lake one i'll fish that when i uh when i get it, get down at lake two um all i need is an hour or so at lake two to know whether i'm going to get into fish and if you know if i'm not i can hightail it down here fishing down here is usually much easier Smaller fish, but it's much easier. Anyway, time to take off my uh, my snowshoes. And here we are, Lake Two. The wind is blowing straight at me, but you know, I wouldn't be fly fishing if you weren't dealing with the wind in some capacity. Uh, let's see, it's choppy, which is going to make it really difficult to spot fish. I mean, these are golden trout. They've got uh, pretty deep red stripes, but um, yeah, the chop is gonna make it difficult. What I'm hoping for, or what I was hoping to see, I was hoping to see large case caddis on these rocks here. I don't see that. Um, I know they were here two weeks ago because my friend was here two weeks ago. But they're not here now, which means that uh, uh, the way that I want to fish probably isn't going to work. But uh, we'll see. Um, you never know what the day is going to bring. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about gear um, for a minute. Uh, my pack, I've got an Exos, an Osprey Exos 38, which is a great pack. I've been uh, I've been uh, carrying Ospreys, geez, for the past 17 years, and only within the last two years I've actually bought a new pack. So this is um, this is new as of last year, and then the year before that I got an uh, an Exos 58. Uh, but before that I was carrying uh, an Ether 60, and then Ether 60, like I say, it's it's uh, I got it in 2001, didn't replace it until 2015. So it, you know it's it's going strong. Um, I've got a life straw inside a Nalgene bottle, which is not the best setup because it doesn't have a real tight fit, so it kind of leaks. Uh, but I, I deal with it. Fishing equipment wise, I've got a hardy featherweight um, reel with a four weight line. I've got a uh, four weight cane rod that I made, I don't know, six or seven years ago. I carry, I basically carry one fly box. I don't, I tend to be, I try to be, you know, as, as minimal as possible. So, uh, it's got a bunch of different leaders in it. And, oh, it's upside down. Um, anyway, uh, this is my high country section. A lot of ant flies. Uh, this is my general creek and spring creek section. More, uh, more high country streamer flies. I'll be fishing pretty much these today, and then some standard, uh, standard nymphs. I need to tie tonight when I get back to the cabin. Um, I stayed in my car last night, but now I get to check into a cabin tonight. So um, I need to fill this row up with these and these. Um, the Spring Creek that I'm on, if we're allowed to fish nymphs, which is, you're not always allowed to, um, those work really well. In addition, 
I've got some gloves there. Uh, Kenai gloves. These are, it's got a neoprene um, palm uh, with a pile top. And then the first two fingers of each glove, um, I can pull back and expose. So that way I can keep, I can keep my other fingers warm while I'm still fishing. I picked this up, this little net glove thing. I, I usually don't use nets and um, my fish handling over the last couple years has gotten worse and worse. And these are big fish, they're going to be slippery, so I figured I'd brought, bring this along. Um, I left my trekking poles at home, so I had to buy some new ones. Those are REI, what are they, Flash Carbon. They were on sale for like a hundred bucks. I've got the spot, since I do a, a lot of stuff alone, uh, whenever I get to my destination, I send my wife and my, my parents a spot. The fishing case that I use is just some generic plastic case. It's, it's expandable, so when I take smaller rods, I can, uh, I can shrink it down, longer rods, I can expand it. And then lastly, I've got these MSR Evo Ascent um, snowshoes. Sorry for the burp there. I just had a piece of bacon. Um, and then in the t in the in the in the pack, I've got basically all my emergency stuff. So I've got an extra pair of gloves. Um, those gloves I expect to get wet, but on the hike back, I want something dry. So I've got those. I've got. I'm wearing a wool shirt now, and the temperatures are the temperatures actually um, gone down a bit. So I've got a um, a soft shell on as well. But in the pack. I've got a, a medium weight wool shirt, heavier weight wool shirt, um, a down jacket, uh, a rain a rain jacket, and uh, emergency bivy shelter, I've got first aid kit, all the emergency stuff that I would need. Um, so if I need to spend a night up here, which uh, I don't plan on doing, um, I've got a way to make a fire, I've got a way to signal for emergency, um, I've got extra clothes to, to keep me warm. Um, so there you go. So I'm sitting here along the bank waiting to spot some fish. I like to, I like to sight fish. I don't like to prospect, uh, which means that I, I basically I'll sit by the bank. I'm about, I don't know, 15 feet from the bank right now, a little bit higher up and I'll just sit and wait and watch and see if, uh, um, if there are any cruising fish. If there aren't any cruising fish, then um, it makes it really difficult for me because uh, you know I'll, I'll do a little prospecting, but I'll, I'll spend maybe maybe an hour prospecting and then I'll just leave. It's just not just not how I like to catch fish. And, and typically what I do is I'll make like six casts. If I'm prospecting, I'll make like six casts to a certain area and then I'll move on and make six casts and move on and, and then uh, yeah, so uh, it could be a quick day for me at Lake Two. We'll see. So, uh, temperatures have really dropped. Um, I've just put on an extra layer. I'm gonna eat. I've been fishing. That little uh, cove right there. Um, uh, there's a fish that keeps coming in and out. He doesn't seem to be real active, but so far it's the only one that I've seen thrown uh, a bunch of the usual suspects at him and there's been no interest so I think I'm gonna eat try to try to stoke stoke the flame and that is my uh, metabolism and uh, try to get warm jeez I've switched positions I'm now on the other side of the snowbank but one of the worst things that could have happened happened and that is as I came over the snowbank my shoes still had snow on them. I'm coming up over these rocks and I took a fall. And fortunately I didn't land on my back, so my back isn't any more injured. But I landed on my, uh, my right thumb and forefinger, which of course are the two fingers that I need to fish with. So I can't, right now I can't feel anything in, in those two fingers. Um, Fish aren't being any more cooperative, although I did see a really nice fish come by, and uh, I just didn't uh, just didn't cast out to him soon enough. So um, it's warmed up a little bit. I ate. That helped. Um, 
put on another layer that helped so I'll, I'll stick out here for a little while so I'm on the far side of the lake now and temperatures dropped again I got into one fish didn't land him uh, I've not I'm not not seeing fish the numbers of fish that I would expect to see and uh, my hand is absolutely useless um, which is a problem because I've got to use trekking poles to get out of here uh, <laughs> so uh, I think maybe a few more casts and then I'm gonna head down to the first lake so I was making my way down the trail to uh, Lake One and I spotted a trout in this pool. I don't see him now, so I may have spooked him, but I'm gonna sit here for, for about five minutes, um, see if he shows himself again, and uh, see if I can catch him. So right about here is where my battery died. I wasn't able to capture the rest of the trip. This is one of the fish that was in that pool. Farther downstream, I found this pool. It had six to eight fish in it, between 15 and 20 inches long, which is you know just an absolutely amazing sight to see um, for any golden trout fly fisher. I made my cast, drifted the fly, first cast, the biggest fish in the pool. Took my fly. Unfortunately, I couldn't I couldn't set the hook with my hand. Um, all the fish scattered. About five minutes later, a couple of them came back. I made another cast. This time trying to set the hook with two hands <laughs> and uh, I missed again and that played out about four times in total before I decided to, to head on out. Uh, it was a two and a half hour hike back to the car. Uh, once I got to the emergency room, they diagnosed my injury as an ulnar collateral ligament tear, um, which means that I need to learn how to cast with my left hand. All in all, though, it was a great trip. That one hour fishing over those big fish is why I, why I fish. And uh, it was extremely satisfying knowing that I was able to fool those fish even if I wasn't able to hook and land them.